Now, in some other reasonably fresh news we've got today, Australia's population has grown to almost 27 million people. That's according to fresh numbers from the Bureau of Statistics. In the year to September, we added an extra 659,800 people. That's about 2.5%. Net overseas migration drove 83% of the growth, with a net migration intake of more than half a million people. Now, Chief Economist for the Committee for Economic Development of Australia, Andrew Barker joins us now. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Sarah. Were we expecting these numbers to be this high? So I don't think these numbers are a surprise themselves, but they are very high. So net overseas migration was a, a new record for the year to September, as, as you mentioned, of, of just under 550,000. And that's clearly placing stresses on the system of our, our housing and our infrastructure, for example, to, to respond to that. And there's a broad consensus that that number is too high if it was to be sustained, but, but part of it reflects the rebound from the pandemic, so we don't expect that it will be. OK, that's really interesting because it was striking me as uh, certainly noteworthy that just as the government was announcing a crackdown on migration, we saw more than half a million migrants arriving, but you think they were already sort of on the way and in the system, in the flow, so to speak, before the government announced its crackdown? Exactly. So, so this still reflects the rebound from the, the pandemic and, and part of that's people entering for the first time who might have otherwise been already in Australia. Uh, the government has been clearing the visa backlog, which has helped to provide the skills that businesses need, but it's also meant more people entering. We've also seen reopening of China's borders and we've got a lot of temporary entrants entering Australia. That, that's the, the dominant source of the very high net overseas migration, including students. But departures are still low and we're only just starting to see that increase in this latest quarterly data. If you were saying before you don't think this particular rate of growth would be sustainable and, and we've grown at a, at a rate of 2.5 per cent, our population over the past year or the year to September last year, is there a growth rate that is more sustainable? So for this rate to be sustainable, we'd have to make some pretty big changes to the capacity of our housing and our infrastructure supply to respond. So what is sustainable is, is clearly a, a lower rate of growth. But as mentioned, this is a rebound from the pandemic, so we don't expect this 2.5% rate to, to, to stay that high. And indeed, during 2024, we expect to see net overseas migration declining. And talking of migration, we always talk about making it as efficient as possible because Australia needs migrants. I think that's been made quite clear for a long time now. But is it important to target uh, migrants that have the skills where we have shortages? And, and are we doing that? So that's really important. And the, the government's own migration review showed that the system is not working as, as well as it should be in that regard. That skills matching of recent migrants has got worse. And, and we just released a report last week that showed that weaker English, uh, poor skills recognition and in some cases discrimination mean we're not making the most of the skills of the migrants that we already have in Australia and we showed that, that they're earning about 10% less than otherwise similar Australian born people which has obviously negative effects for the migrants but also for the Australian economy of not not filling the skill gaps as you mentioned. Is there a way when migrants do come to Australia that we can make their transition a little easier? You were talking there about some not being able to find jobs because they may have uh, lower English speaking levels or you mentioned their discrimination. With the migrants that we we do have is there some way to, to make make it easier for them to help us really which is which is what's going on yeah certainly there's there's real opportunities there so so english is really important we're seeing more skilled migrants coming from non-english speaking backgrounds which is really positive for diversity and from really drawing the best talent from all around the world but we think we need to support those migrants better when they come to Australia in terms of more support with improving their English language, which can then enable them to do jobs that really use their skills well. And also on skills recognition, there's potential to work to, uh, to recognise skills better based on competence rather than going through a, a particular pathway to, to, to get qualifications. We were only talking yesterday about a, a doctor, actually, who'd come from Syria 
who hasn't been able to practice despite 30 years of practice uh, in Syria just because qualifications aren't recognised here in Australia. So obviously finding a pathway to, to make that uh, qualification recognisable or you know, do a, new, a bridging course, whatever it might take, make that easier. You mentioned they're trying to help with the English language skills. How could we do that? What's a, what's a feasible and tangible thing we could do? So at the moment, we do have English language training, but it's largely targeted to humanitarian and family migrants who, who clearly need that support. But only about 15% of skilled migrants get support through through the government, main government program. When we look internationally, Canada, for example, has much uh, wider availability of English language training for new migrants. And what we find when we look at those international examples is that the upfront government costs are more than offset by the fiscal benefits from higher wages and therefore greater tax revenue over time from improving the English skills of migrants. So, so there are successful international examples that, that we can draw from here. Yeah, some precedent there. Andrew, thanks so much for your time today and your insight. Much appreciated. Thanks, Sarah. Appreciate it. No worries. That is the uh, Senior Economist for the Committee for Economic Development of Australia, Andrew Barker.